one of the most overwhelming aspect about data engineering is that there are just so many tools available in the market. Whether you are a beginner or a veteran, I'm sure if you are a data engineer, you have come across this problem. I've made a video on my channel about the data engineering roadmap that talks about skills required to be a data engineer, but this one is different. It's focused on tools. So for example, SQL, Python, data warehousing, Spark, these things are different skills required to be a data engineer. But when we talk about tools, tools is a place where you can use your skills. So for example, Snowflake is a tool where you can use SQL as a skill. Databricks is a tool where you use SQL or Spark or Python. Then similarly, Airflow is a tool that you use to orchestrate your pipeline. So these are examples of different tools. The main challenge with these tools is that there are so many new tools coming in the market that it's just hard to keep track of them, let alone understand or master them. The 80-20 principle applies here as well, that 80% of job market require only 20% of tools. This is Josh. I'm an AI engineer at Google and previously a data engineer. In this video, we are going to talk about top five data engineering tools out there in the job market. Now, I love data and facts derived out of data. So this list is not going to be my personal opinion. It's going to be data derived from LinkedIn jobs. So I have created a custom code and an algorithm that will scrape through thousands and thousands of LinkedIn jobs and it will find out that which tool is most frequently coming up in different job descriptions. So for example, if the tool Airflow is showing up in 120 different jobs, then the score of Airflow will be 120. This way we are going to use 29 different tools in data engineering and rank them according to how often do they come in the job descriptions. So yes, I have done some data engineering of my own for this video. Before we take a look at the results of top five data engineering tools, Let's take a look at my code at a very high level and understand how this works. So at the start, these are just some basic imports that I've done and then scrape LinkedIn jobs. It hits this particular URL and instead of keyword, I'm entering data engineering. So it will open up a URL like this. In the backend, I've looked at different elements. So if I just press F12, it will show me different elements on this page. So using these elements, what I've done is selected the base card, which is the main HTML page. And then I've fetched the job title, company name and description. Now description in this case is essentially a job link. I just opened this job link and then there is another method called expand description. For example, if I click on Nike data engineer position, it will open up a page like this. Now you have to click on show more. So this will expand the description. And now my code will go through this description in the back end and it will try to find out what different tools are being mentioned here. So for example, you can see different skills like AWS SQL Spark is being mentioned, but there are also a lot of tools like Informatica, Apache NiFi, etc. So there are different methods for extracting job description, expanding job description, extracting skills. So it will basically compare these 29 tools that I've mentioned here with the job description. And this is the main method. When I run this code, this is a simple execution of 20 different scrolls. So in LinkedIn, you can keep scrolling down. And if you scroll all the way down, it will load the page and it will load more number of jobs so it will first of all scroll 20 times and it will start with the first job data engineer nike and, and then this is the job url and it says what are the tools which are included in that job there are so many jobs that it went through i've run the same code on a much larger data set with multiple scrolls so if you look into the results you can see that this particular job data engineer python breeze airways has no mention of any kind of tools at all so when i click on it I found out that it has a lot of mention like Python and SQL, for example, and lots of skills like data governance, AWS architecture, but it doesn't really mention any tool. So there were lots of instances where some jobs did not mention any tool at all. So that's how my code works. And now let's look at the results. I'm going to give my exact code down in the description below. So if you want to take a look at it, play around with it, feel free to do it. This is the final result when I ran this algorithm on 16,889 LinkedIn jobs. And you can see the top five or the top seven tools here do comprise of majority of roles. I have hidden the top seven tools. You can 
see which tools did not make to the top five or top seven so you can pause the video here and make your predictions about what tool will be at what position and then by the end of this video you can compare if you are right or wrong i'm going to keep number six number seven and number one in the end let's start with number five so number five is databricks with over 2540 jobs so databricks is a tool where you can do all your transformations be it in spark or be it in sql or be it in python you can decide what kind of compute do you want and you can also decide where you want to store your data it will all happen in the back end automatically with a cloud platform of your choice you don't have visibility to that cloud platform per se but you have visibility to entire Databricks console. Here you can create your Jupyter notebooks. You can also uh, create Databricks SQL workspaces. Databricks SQL is a comparatively new offering. They have created that to kind of compete with Snowflake. Apart from that, the most common use case of Databricks that I have seen is uh, to run Spark jobs. And if you compare Spark uh, platforms like AWS EMR and GCP Dataproc with Databricks, you will find out that Databricks is usually a little bit more expensive and the reason for that is that Databricks uses its own Spark runtime. So if you don't know, the founder of Spark is working with Databricks. So they have a different runtime than it's available in the open source market. That's why their Spark runtime is significantly more faster compared to open source Spark runtime. And that's why you have to pay a premium for it. In Databricks, in the notebook section, you can also create different charts, different graphs. Uh, and in the latest view, they have like a photon cluster that's more specifically designed to optimize your SQL workload. You can also create a dashboard. You can share it with your team here as well. But this is not really like Tableau. It's not a dashboarding tool. It's a place where you can create your dashboard just before you create your dashboard on something like Tableau just to see how the data looks. And then it has also a lot of interesting machine learning features for data scientists like MLflow where you can uh, host your machine learning model on MLflow, put it onto staging and production environment and also generate an API that directly works for calling the model. So it tracks all of your past predictions so that you can take a look at F1 score, accuracy, etc. of your model on every different call. That way you can again feed it back to the model to improve it. You can also compare different MLflow runs with different parameters so that it helps you identify which set of parameter gave the best results. So Databricks is like a jack of all trades. It tries to do so many things and that's why I think it is very popular. Number four, now this was a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, but it is Tableau with 2,670 jobs. Explaining Tableau is one of the easiest things. It's a place where you can create different dashboards. You can connect your Tableau uh, server into with anything, like maybe you could connect it with S3, Redshift, or if it's on MySQL, or if it's on even on GCP, BigQuery, anywhere your data is, you can connect it with this dashboard and just use it to create graphs. It has different options and so much customization available that I have just never been able to wrap my hand around. I have had very less experience in Tableau and if you are a core data engineer then that would be true for you as well but Tableau is one of the top five uh, tools being mentioned in the data engineering job so I would definitely not ignore it. Number three, the tool is Airflow with 2974 jobs. Airflow. I mean, what can I say about this? This is again not coming as a surprise. This is the third most popular tool in data engineering because it just makes orchestration so easy. As a data engineer, you can have different code for data ingestion, processing, or maybe creating intermediate tables, aggregates, and then finally loading it into your final database. So you have all these different pieces, but Airflow is one tool that will help you combine all of them together. It will orchestrate everything. It will call one code, wait for it, and then according to its result, we will call the second code. But this is oversimplifying what Airflow does. Airflow also makes your life a lot easier when you just have to move your data from one place to another because of a lots of inbuilt operators. And uh, this helps you in a way that you don't have to write a custom code for it. Just import that Airflow operator and call it. You can also create your own custom operators. What I've done in my career is mostly I've, I've used Airflow to call different Python and shell scripts, but these operators are also very handy when it fits your exact use case. Also, it gives you a lot of monitoring capability. So anytime something goes wrong, no matter where you are running your job, you can see the logs on Airflow. So there are some Airflow alternatives 
uh, emerging in the market but still they haven't been able to replace the dominance that has already been established by airflow number two is kafka with 3292 jobs if i say kafka is like a queue service i think that would be oversimplifying again what kafka does it's like a distributed streaming technology and kafka is used by 70 percent of fortune 500 companies again like airflow that is also an open source system and there are a lot of implementations of kafka which are inspired by it but then add some additional benefits like Google Pub Sub is a perfect example. Similarly, AWS Kinesis, how you can gather all of your live stream data and do transformations. So it has high throughput, it is scalable, it, it stores everything permanently if you want it, and it is also highly available. So it can be spanned across multiple availability zones to make it fault tolerant as well. Some common use case of Kafka is like click stream analysis or time stream data analysis, real time analysis, and next gen apps and i guess the reason why kafka is mentioned in a lot of job descriptions compared to something like google pub sub or aws kinesis is because these technologies are specific to a cloud platform but if you know kafka you can easily learn google pub sub and same thing applies to aws kinesis and i think azure has event hub so because of that kafka does come up often in the job descriptions what i did not expect is for it to be the second most popular of data engineering. Learning these different tools and skills is one thing, but then practicing them as much as possible before your interviews is very crucial. And our today's video sponsor, Board Infinity, have created a tool called Vera, where you have to give your information, like where you graduated from, what have you majored in, or what is your current job experience. You can also give your LinkedIn profile, so it will scrape through your LinkedIn profile and then ask you the job questions accordingly, based on your previous experience. And you also have to mention which company you're applying for and what is the job position so it will uh, again find out similar types of questions which is being asked in that company for that job position and it will set up a mock interview for you you can use this tool a couple of times for completely free for your interviews even after that if you want to keep using it it's very economical i'm going to link it down below in the description and in the comment section as well and this seems very interesting so do give it a look number one tool is Snowflake. When the results were not revealed, did you predict that Snowflake is going to be number one? Let's discuss about it in the comment section below. At the same time, I'm also going to reveal number six and number seven, which is Redshift and BigQuery. I feel that Snowflake, Redshift and BigQuery fall into the similar umbrella. Snowflake is a data cloud platform. It can be again hosted on GCP, AWS and Azure and it's pretty much like Databricks where you have your uh, storage and compute separate but snowflake is more optimized for sql jobs from my experience the subsequent latency of platforms like snowflake and bigquery is way more impressive compared to something like databricks because they have their cold start which is simply not present here in snowflake or bigquery apart from that snowflake is also has very rich data sharing features so for example it has data share data exchange data exchange is a place where different publishers and uh, consumers come together and they publish their data sets and consumers can use it even if they are on a different snowflake account without the physical movement of data something like this is used a lot in data mesh environment then Talking about Redshift and BigQuery, they are similar offering like Snowflake itself, but they are just hosted on specific cloud platform. Redshift is hosted on AWS, where BigQuery is hosted on GCP. Now BigQuery also does pretty much all the things that Snowflake does, but there's one additional thing that it's good at is the machine learning capabilities. In BigQuery, you can just write create an ML model like an SQL command, and then it will create that machine learning model, train it. You can also play around with different types of parameters. So if you don't have very in-depth knowledge of ml models but good knowledge of sql and you still have this ml use case you can do that on bigquery so you can choose any one platform out of these three and that would be sufficient also an honorable mention goes to mongodb mongodb is a nosql database it's often used in time series type of data or a data where you don't have a defined structure understanding any type of nosql database not just mongodb is a key requirement of a data engineering job all right so we found out top data engineering tools we talked about top five or six seven tools in the data engineering job market and added some of my recommendations as well i hope you find this video useful and uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel see you next time